And this demo is called On the Level. It comes very early in the year, um, and it comes early on purpose because I'm going to use it again later uh, near the end of the year in a different context. I like it when a demonstration is used more than once because the students will then not be surprised at it the second time and can pay closer attention to the individual uh, aspects and the characteristics of that particular demo. Uh, we've got a piece of apparatus here that the students may or may not have uh, had contact with. It's a, a U-tube. We'll be using it later on in the year as an open arm manometer and we'll be trying to use this same apparatus again so that they're not uh, so that they are familiar uh, with how this works and then can concentrate on the calculations and the things that we'll be doing then. The device is prepared ahead of time. This is a phenomenon that's sitting in front of them as they come into class. Uh, they look at it and perhaps they're puzzled. I'm not sure, but I will raise the questions and then classroom discussion is really the heart of this demonstration because as they begin to suggest things that I should do, uh, we'll follow through with those. So I'll try to go through some of the things uh, the students uh, might raise as questions or suggestions as what is going on here. One of the first things I notice is that the two levels are not the same. Some, not all, will recognize that that probably is inconsistent. They should be the same. And so I would ask the question, well, why aren't they the same? And how can we get them to be the same? And those kinds of, of leading questions. It is in the art of questioning that we begin to learn to teach. De developing that art of questioning is one of the most important skills that a teacher can develop. Why are the two levels not the same? Well, I could simply get the two levels the same by moving one of the arms up or moving the other arm down and that kind of thing. Uh, all that really isn't getting at the issue. It also gets at an issue though for the, uh, the teacher. That's why I use this uh, flexible tubing in here. Many uh, U-tubes are made as a solid piece of glass, but I use one with a uh, Tigon tubing or other kind of clear plastic tubing. I can move the tubes up and down and adjust them, but then eventually they notice that there are corks that are holding it together here. Hmm. Well, what happens if I take one of the corks out? The levels remain unequal. Why is that? Why are the levels unequal? And they come up with a variety of, of uh, possibilities. But then they notice, well, there's a cork on the other end, so it really can't change unless I change that cork. So I'll put this cork back in and take this cork out. And they get all upset. No, no, we want them both out at the same time. OK, so then what I'll do is put my thumb over this one and take that one out. And you see, it makes no difference that both corks are out. And, uh, and then they really get irate. No, 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 that's not what we want at all. And, oh, you want them both out at the same time. And we do that. That doesn't seem to have solved the problem. Uh, there is a different problem here now. Uh, now why are the levels not the same? And so we go through again some more questioning and discussing, trying to bring out of the students what their, con what their concepts are and try to find out what their misconceptions are and deal with those as we go through it. They're sometimes saying, well, there's air pressure. It's the same should. Maybe there's more air pressure on this side of the room. And that's why this level is down further, or that the pressure is less on this side of the room. So this high, but eh, the air pressure is probably the same on both sides. And so they ought to be at the same level. Uh, we tried it before. Let's move these arms. Maybe that'll affect it. If we can move these, that, uh, that still doesn't affect it. The levels are not the same. Sooner or later, someone will ask the question, are there two liquids in there? Are there two liquids? Well, what difference would that make? So what if there are two liquids? Yeah, there's this green liquid that I put in here called food coloring and another liquid, maybe, is that what you're, no, 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 there are two liquids that 
have different densities. It takes a while sometimes to get that out of them, but there might be two liquids in here that have different densities. That is not the point to stop, and that's the mistake that I made. The first five years of my career, I spent all my time just learning the content. It's only been in the last several years that I've begun to understand how the students think and what some of the misconceptions they have and how I've been involved in teaching some of those misconceptions. But stopping at the point where they say there are two liquids with different densities is inadequate. There's much more that needs to be done, the least of which is to bring out of them which, if there are two liquids, is in which arm. Don't stop at the point where they've said that there are two liquids. Let them figure out, discover why they're different. Okay, two liquids, two densities. One density is greater than the other. Which one of these must have Ah, this side must have the liquid with the greater density, and this side must have the liquid with the lighter density. That's why this one is further down. It's weighing more. Oh, indeed, that is what we have here, two liquids of different densities. It was assembled ahead of time, and then I tilt it just like this, put the cork in, and bring it back. And now the other cork, of course, can be added. And we are back where we started and we're ready for the next class. And the same discussion can occur there. How do I put the two liquids in? Well, the more dense liquid goes in first. And then the lighter liquid I pour on top of that until I get it to the heights that I want to have. What are the two liquids? Someone will usually ask. Well, one of them is water. The other liquid that I've used, the more dense liquid, is a saturated solution of sodium chloride. You could use many different liquids. I personally have found that a saturated solution of sodium chloride is safe, it uh, is easy to work with, and it doesn't discolor or interfere with the uh, apparatus itself. I used to use plastic tubes here and alcohol because it was less dense and that would react with these things. So you can play around in your own environment, find things that are cheap, but this discrepant event gets students to be thinking about their environment and what's going on. Uh, I say I will use this again, bring out the same apparatus as we come back to the study of gas laws, and use this same apparatus. Then I know that they understand the concept of why these two liquids ought to have the same height if it is just one liquid. And then we can use this then to measure the pressure of gases in a manometer on the level. Thank you.